Okay, we'll get started here. Hello, my name is Jen and I'm the Academic Programs Coordinator at the School of Architecture, Planning and Landscape at the University of Calgary. And I'm joined today by Janelle, who is our Student Recruitment Specialist. So thank you for joining us. We are excited to discuss our master's programs. And I just wanted to let you know that we are recording this session and it will be sent out to all the registrants afterwards. So we're gonna go over just a few things today um, and uh, just to give some basic information. And then most of this is intended to be more of a kind of a drop in, ask questions and get answers um, session. So we're gonna talk about our professional and our research-based programs. So um, Calgary is, as a design community plays an integral role in addressing some of the most pressing societal challenges of our time, including sustainability, access and equality, climate resilience, public health, social justice, and community building. We're very engaged with the city of Calgary and the region, so it's a great place to study design in all different areas. So we're gonna talk about our three professional programs. So those are the ones that are currently open, accepting applications until May 15th. So we have our Master of Architecture program, which has a two-year program or a three-year program. So if you have an architecture undergraduate degree from an accredited um, program, then you could be eligible for our two-year program. Otherwise, with any other discipline or background, it's a three-year program starting with the foundation year. Then we have our two-year Masters of Planning, and we have, again, the same thing with our landscape architecture. It's either a two-year or a three-year program, depending on your academic background. And then we have our Master of Environmental Design, which is a research-based program. So for those of you that already have a professional design degree, our MEDES is a research intensive thesis based degree. Um, so as an emerging professional, you can pursue education beyond your professional degree to develop an area of expertise or practice that specialization that will enhance your CV and increase your value to prospective employers. So we do like to share tuition amounts because it's kind of hard to figure out on the website. Um, however, this is not 100% guaranteed. It is subject to change. Um, it's, you know, but it is, it will give you a good idea of the costs of tuition and the general fees that are part of the, what you pay as a student here. So our general fees cover things like a, a transit pass, um, health and dental insurance, um, access to athletics and rec centers and things like that on campus. It's pretty standard across all universities. So we also have study abroad programs. So um, our students can go to spend a, like a spring semester in Zurich, Barcelona, or Tokyo, which is really exciting to get to know, um, you know, learn design in a different setting and, and get a global experience like that. Our students who attend and participate in these programs have amazing experiences and come back just with their eyes wide open and, and really excited about the opportunities that could go beyond Calgary, Alberta, and Canada. Um, so it's an awesome opportunity that people can share in in the program. This is for our mostly for our course-based masters, so architecture, planning, and landscape architecture. And um, we don't, it's not required, it's not mandatory. We always offer a Calgary option. So some really cool studios that are in this area for those people who don't want to do a study abroad program. And work integrated learning is a, is a big piece that for our senior students in the, in the three professional programs. So basically one studio will be dedicated to them working with a firm um, and they work on their projects and then bring what they're learning uh, back to their own um, kind of studio project for that semester. So you're, you're learning directly from a mentor who is a practicing architect, planner or landscape architect. It's a great opportunity for networking as well for potential employment after you're done your degree. Um, and it's really hands-on um, practical experience that you get once you're done kind of the core curriculum of the program before that. Okay, so um, like I mentioned before, this is more of a kind of a brief overview. We um, are here to answer your questions. If you're um, thinking about applying in this reopening time when we reopen the applications for the MARC, the MLA or the M plan and the Master of Environmental Design, our ME does. So these are just different ways you can contact us. Um, we do host kind of drop-in sessions monthly. We call them Ask Apple. So feel free to, to check those out anytime if you have questions. Um, as you're getting ready to apply. We do have one next week. Um, and then you can always email us. So send us an email and we will get back to you as soon as we can um, to answer your questions. So um, I'm gonna just kind of open it up. So if you wanna ask a question, you can pop it in the chat and Janelle will read them out and we'll go from there. Or you can always unmute yourself and ask your question live as well. 
I'll just leave this up for a couple more minutes. So if anyone is here and thinking about applying um, for our May 15th deadline, you know, feel free to ask any questions about the application process. Um, we do have admissions pages for each of the programs where you can find, you know, the required materials to, to submit. Um, it is a two-step process for all of our applications. So there's an online application form, which is something you fill out where you do your biographical information, your degrees, and you also enter your references there. So their names and contact information. And then you submit that, and that is going to send an automatic automatic email to your referees to complete their, um, like with the link and instructions to complete their online reference. Um, and then you will receive an email with instructions and a link on how to upload your supporting documents. So you want to do the first piece, the form, as soon as you can, because that gives your references a bit more time to upload, like to complete that online reference. Sometimes they take a bit of time and need a bit more time. So Currently, we have their deadline set at May 19th, so the online form should be submitted by May 15th and the supporting documents. Um, we can be flexible, so if you're like close and you're just pulling your portfolio together or need a little bit more time, just reach out to us and we could possibly um, extend things for a few days, depending on the situation. We do need to get reviewing the applications, so it wouldn't be for too long, but we're happy to help if you just need a bit more time. Okay, great question about scholarships. So um, what happens is all applications are automatically reviewed for an entrance scholarship. So those are, you don't have to submit a separate application for that. And they can range from 2000 to $5,000, sometimes higher, depends on the year and the budget. Um, so that's just automatic and you would be notified in your offer letter if you were successful in, in um, receiving one of those. And then there's also um, teaching assistantships that are available to all of our master's students. Um, we do have a new undergraduate program, the Bachelor of Design in City Innovation. So we have our second cohort. So we have two cohorts in right now. By the fall, we'll have three years worth of the four-year program in, in school. So they those are a lot of courses that need teaching assistantships. We also have them in our master's program. So once you've done the first year, you're eligible to TA the courses from the first year while you're in your second year. Um, so those are good ways to earn money um, and, and experience. We also have research assistantships. So if you get to know a professor who has a research project with funding, um, they often hire students in the summer or even during the term sometimes to help them out with those projects. Again, great experience um, and a way to earn funds. Um, and then there's also um, scholarships that are available every year. They're not huge, but they're definitely available. Um, all of our students are eligible as long as they're, you know, it's like they're usually based on merit, so strong academic standing. Um, and you apply for those every spring. And they usually pay out in the following fall. Um, so there's that kind of thing as well. Um, so I hope that helps answer that question. It is, there's no guaranteed full funding or anything like that. It is kind of driven by the student and it is competitive, but there are quite a few options. And there are still um, entrance scholarships available for this reopening of the application. So you would be eligible for this fall um, with this application. I'm trying to think of other questions that we frequently get asked uh, regarding the references. Typically, we require two of them to be academic and the third can be professional. However, if you've been out of school for a while, we completely understand that. So you might end up with only one academic or possibly no academic references. Um, so then the three would be professional. And what we mean by professional is someone that you've worked for, so a supervisor or a manager um, or a client if you have your own business. So something, someone you kind of report to. So... And because they can't speak to maybe your academic strengths, they could speak to things like work ethic, punctuality, you know, if they, it happens to be in a design capacity, then they can also speak to that as well. Okay.
Great question for the English score. So we have, it's a bit of a flexible score. We know ours are a little bit higher than the Faculty of Graduate Studies requires. So it depends on the score. So for the IELTS, the IELTS test score, we usually require a 7.5, but if the application's super strong, we might consider a 7.0. Um, it's possible that our committee might say, let's have a quick phone call or Zoom call with that person to, to kind of at least um, confirm speaking English. Um, for the TOEFL, um, I believe our minimum is 105. We would accept someone like with 100, maybe 99 if it's a really strong application. Again, possibly with a quick interview. Um, I think our Duolingo is 135 if we're still accepting that this year. Um, anyways, I hope I've mentioned them one of the, the two main ones we get are the IELTS and the TOEFL. So let me know if you have more questions around that. Um, okay, so yeah, for the, if you don't make the May deadline, then our next cycle will be for fall 2026. And so that those just the online form will open on September 1st of this year, and the deadline will be January 15th, 2026 for fall 2026 admission. And I just wanted to mention too about the English scores, we review all applications. So even if you had a 6.5 IELTS, we would still review everything. Um, you know, you're, you'd be ranked lower for sure. And there would be concerns about English. But they might reach out and see um, if there's a possibility of you getting tested again, or again, maybe the interview. So um, it wouldn't mean that you wouldn't get reviewed. So you all of them are going to be considered. And for um, about the deadlines, so um, unfortunately for international students, they do need more time to be able to apply for a visa and have it accepted. But for Canadian domestic applicants, um, we could have a bit of flexibility with that as well. So like I said before, it could be just a few days, but if you, you know, something comes up and you need a bit more time, just email us and uh, we'll see what we can do. I can't guarantee it, but we could look into it. Janelle's putting a lot of great links in the chat here. So if you uh, wanted to dig around our website and learn a bit more about our programs and what our students are doing, there's lots of information there. Um, okay, so the question is, is there a chance to have a review or feedback on the portfolio before applying? Um, we can sometimes offer that as a possibility. And I, again, I can't guarantee it. And because of the short turnaround time right now, um, it's possible. So. If you have a portfolio put together now and you think it's ready, you just want a bit of kind of feedback on it, you could email it to us at our admissions email and we'll see what we can do. Um, and then if, uh, if, if we can't, if there isn't anyone available to turn it around really quickly, then unfortunately that would be the case, but we can try. So go ahead and send it to us. I wouldn't wait till May 13th or something like that. If you can get it to us, you know, very quickly, then we can try to help you out with that. Um, yeah, so great question. So do graduates tend to remain in Calgary for their careers? Are professional licenses and degrees typically able to be used across provinces? So absolutely, yes. So we have people who come to us from other provinces. Um, many stay, many go back to their home provinces. So for architecture, planning and landscape architecture, you're, you, are, are licensed, like you are eligible to be licensed in any province or territory. So what you do when you graduate is you register with the association that you, um, the provincial association that you want to kind of practice under and work with. So that might be the AAA here in Alberta. So the Alberta Association of Architects, for example, and you do everything here. You do your internship hours here. Um, or you, maybe you're from Ontario and you know you want to go back there. You're totally eligible. You would just register with the OAA in that case um, and do your work there, your internship and hours there. So, and again, after you're done, you can still change provinces. It's just, I think, some paperwork that has to be taken care of. And the same goes for the landscape architecture and planning. Um, and the other piece that's, that's great about our degree is it is reciprocal with the United States and some European countries as well. So basically you could, you would be eligible to practice there if you did everything here, internship, um, wrote the exams, you might just have to write like do some, take one more course or something like that if you wanted to move to a different country, but it'd be very minimal and you're, you're ready to go to practice elsewhere outside of Canada as well.
I would say that quite a few of our students who come from elsewhere do stay in Calgary because they've been able to network a lot with potential employers while they're here. Um, and, you know, you might move here intending to move back and you might love it here and decide to stay here. You know, that's another option. And then again, people do actually go back home and, and practice where they're from too. So um, it's a good mix of, of those kind of scenarios. And like we said earlier on the last slide too, we're happy to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with people so or phone calls. So whatever, if you kind of start this process and then you're like, ah, I have five more questions, you can, you can come to Ask Sapple next week. You can email us and request a Zoom or a phone call or an in-person meeting if you're in Calgary. So make sure you keep in touch with us as you go through the process. And if we have answered all your questions, you don't have to stay for the full hour. It's totally up to you. Um, other people might join and ask questions that you might not have thought of. But I mean, it might just be that this is our group for today. Um, and like I said, we were recording and we will send this out after in case there's something you want to remember that we discussed. Thanks for coming.